This is Maria. She's a loggerhead sea turtle. Three years ago, she was found on the beach of Laganisi. She had severe carapace injuries, probably caused by a collision with a boat. She is now recovering at Arhalon's rescue centre in Athens. Arhalon's rescue centre was first created in 1994 with financial support from the environmental ministry. The Greek railway donated five wagons that were placed on the beach of Glyfada. Nowadays, the centre is home to over 50 turtles that are brought here from all over Greece. The centre is run by a group of committed people and largely relies on volunteers. My name is Pavlo, I am half French and half Greek and I'm, at the moment I'm the coordinator of the rescue centre here. The centre has a two, two missions I would say about turtles. One we record the, the dead ones that are found all around Greece and the second one is obviously to collect all the injured ones and bring them here to be able to treat them. We get about 50 to 60 turtles uh, every year that are injured, but it's a big number, but uh, just uh, to compare, we have about 600 dead ones that we report every year. Arhalon's Rescue Centre runs a turtle ambulance service that collects injured and sick turtles and brings them to Glyfada for treatment. In the case of uh, of Joy, uh, Hara in Greek, uh, who was found uh, by somebody on the beach. Generally they contact the, the port police, so the coast guards, and the coast guards bring them, uh, bring them to the bus station, and there they take the bus or the ferry to come to come to us here. When a turtle arrives at the rescue center, we measure her, weigh her, uh, give her some drips, um, usually take her for x-rays to see if there's anything, anything wrong inside it, if there has any hooks, for example, or any kind of a uh, metal object that we could see on the, on the x-rays. The life of a turtle in the Mediterranean has always been full of hazards, but we humans have added a few more. Sometimes the turtle is on the surface resting and the propeller damages the carapace of the head. Um, in the accidental injuries we also have uh, plastic bags. Everybody seems to know that plastic bags look very much like jellyfish, so turtles eat them by, by accident. And, uh, and then get ill. If they have a little bit, they will come to us here. We will help them to pass it through with some oil and then the turtle will be able to go back to the sea. Uh, the last injury, which is at, my, at the moment very, um, uh, I would say, uh, delicate to talk about, is, is the um, injuries that are caused on purpose by human beings, uh, by some fishermen. I would say most fishermen are very helpful, but some of them don't like them very much and tend to injure them on the head. Those cases are many in Greece and, and we also have a lot of time of recovery like uh, uh, animals that have come recently have injury will stay se several months before they start eating again and it might be several years before they're able to go back to the sea. Around 40 volunteers pass through the centre every year. It is their dedication and knowledge that makes running the centre possible. Um, but obviously I could not take care of all the 60 turtles by myself. We rely a lot on on the help of volunteers. Uh, here at the center we get about 40 volunteers every year who come from all over the world. Hello, my name is Verena. I'm from Austria. I'm an Arkland volunteer. I will stay here for two months and I will look after Sula. Um, I adopted her for two months, so I pay for all her medication and the treatment. This is my favorite turtle because it was the first turtle I had to treat when I came here. Um, she has a head injury. I like Anime because she's a very, very calm turtle, very peaceful. The first day I was here, um, I went into the sea to, to get her. So it was a, a real adventure. But I took her out, we swam to the shore together, me and Marcus, and we um, took the turtle to the shore. And we saw that there were lots of uh, bloodsuckers and barnacles on her. She was, she was very, uh, very sad. So we took her to the, the rescue center, and with all the other volunteers, we took off all the barnacles and, and the bloodsucker. 
because there is, the pressure was there and it, and it went much better quite quickly. My name is Kate Boise. Uh, I'm from England, but I've lived in Greece the last three and a half years. Uh, I started volunteering uh, last year when my friend who I play hockey with found a turtle and she brought it here and that's how I got to know about Archelon and I came down and I've been volunteering ever since. Volunteers perform all the daily tasks necessary to give turtles their best chance of recovery. Every morning we, before we start, the temperatures are taken of each tank to make sure that they, they are correct. Um, after that, at 9 o'clock, the schedule gets put up of what needs doing for the day. So either tube feeding, uh, drip feeds, cleaning of the tank, cleaning of the turtles. The feeding of the turtles, it's done after the tanks have been cleaned. Uh, depending on the size of the turtle, it's depending how many pieces and how big the pieces are that we feed the turtle. Um, they get fed squid or any white fish. They really like sea urchins, so uh, some of the volunteers go into the sea and, and collect sea urchins. You have... <laughs> I started to work as a volunteer, so in 2000, uh, I worked in Crete uh, on the beach project and then I really liked it a lot, so I continued to work with turtles. Uh, I have traveled a lot uh, in different continents and then I came back to, to work here as, as, a, as an employee for Archelon. Arhalon's history dates back to 1977, when Anna and Demetrius Margaritoulis went on holiday to Zakynthos and discovered turtle strikes on the beach. Uh, this was a big discovery because nobody knew about, well, nobody had recorded scientifically uh, the presence of turtles in, in the Mediterranean and, and also in, in Greece. Um, it turned out to be the biggest population of, of the uh, nesting turtles that, that we have, so the places in Zakynthos and the Peloponnese and also in Crete are are very essential for the whole survival of the whole population of the Mediterranean. Since then, the organisation developed to become one of the major centres of turtle conservation in the Mediterranean, running several projects across continental Greece and Crete. Hi, I'm Ia, I'm from Denmark and I'm currently working as a volunteer with Achelon. The overall goal of the organisation is to monitor and protect all sea turtles and their habitats in Greece. Every morning we go on our monitoring beaches. Here in Matala we've got five kilometres of monitoring beach. We look for the adult tracks to find the new nests so we can protect them. In this area where you can't see any track, where there's a lot of thrown sand, okay. that's going to be a nest, I believe. Okay. We'll find out when we start to dig. Nesting female will come onto the beach at night to make her nest. And the same female turtle can make between two and four, usually about three nests in one summer. But she'll only have a nesting period every uh, third year or so. Each nest takes about 50 days to incubate and the baby turtles will come out. The hatchlings find the water by following the brightest light, which is the reflection of the moon and the stars on the water. But the problem is that many uh, nesting beaches have lights at the back of the beach, so like hotels or tavernas, restaurants, bars. And of course that light is brighter than the reflection of the moon and the stars on the water. We built the so-called nest shades uh, out of donated beach mats. Uh, so we kind of form a corridor to the water. We have nesting beaches all over Greece and also camps all over Greece. Overall it's around 200 volunteers on Crete each year. Kiparisa Bay is Arhalon's biggest project. Long stretches of beautiful, lonely beaches that have been miraculously spared by the ever-growing tourism industry. The 
my name is Kim, I'm a volunteer with Archelon and I'm working here in Kippersea as the field leader, monitoring leader. This project um, covers the southern Kippersea Bay, so we have four sectors that we monitor, they're 10 kilometres approximately. Um, we usually have over the season about 150 volunteers from 15 different countries and peak season we would usually have up to 40 volunteers at one time. This project is a bit different than the other projects in Greece because the beaches we protect, they are not so developed and uh, this, uh, for this reason the threats for the turtles uh, are not the tourism but uh, from predation. Um, a study was done here and it showed that uh, without any measures 60% of the nests are being predated by dogs, foxes and jackals. Uh, so for this reason we use uh, metal <coughs> grids and bamboos in order to protect them from predation. The area might not be affected by development as in other parts of Greece, but take a stroll here and you'll get a glimpse of what's hiding in the depths of the sea. Most of it is uh, washed out by the sea, so what we do is every day we arrange uh, uh, cleaning shifts and all the volunteers we go on the beach and we collect garbage for around one hour. Although Kiparisa beaches aren't as pristine as they once were, they nonetheless remain an important nesting habitat for the Greek loggerheads. But for how long? Unfortunately though, we do have a developer in the area that wants to build 50 villas on the back of the beach. So it's one of the aims of Archelon through our research and our protection measures to prevent this development in the future. An important part of Archelon's work is engaging with the public and sharing information about sea turtles. We do a lot of public awareness to tell people what they can do to minimise the negative impact and especially tourism, how that affects it with all the activity going on on the beaches, not just during the day but during the night with people going on the beach and having beach parties. A lot of tourists are interested, like they have, an, like they're interested in knowing about how this beach that looks like a perfectly normal beach, how is this a nesting habitat for an endangered yeah. species? Like it all sounds very exotic to them. We work with the locals, uh, we try to communicate with kids so we can develop sensitive and uh, feel free to, come, to become volunteers as they grow up. Glifada's rescue centre is open to the public and is visited by many school children every day. My name is Coletto Georgia. I am responsible for the environmental education department. I present uh, to schools our rescue center. We have a program of uh, approximately one hour and 30 minutes that we do tours to schools, organized groups, and we talk to them about the endangered species of the sea turtle and specifically the Caleta Caleta. We we have almost 10,000 children per year that uh, come to see the sea turtles. So the thing is that some of them will probably become uh, future protectors of the, of the environment. Every year, Arhalon's Rescue Centre organises the celebration of World Turtle Day. It's a great opportunity to learn about turtles and to discover what it's like to be an Arhalon volunteer. The Acropolis arguably the most recognisable site in Europe, an icon of Greek architecture. This ancient site is dear to us not only because of its beauty, but because it's a thriving physical record of the civilization that shaped the European continent. The Greeks have always been a maritime nation, and shipping is probably the oldest form of occupation here. Minoan civilization, regarded as the earliest recorded in Europe, was founded on the island of Crete. Human relationship with the sea is as old as our history and today we still depend on it. Turtles have been here long before us. Fossil records suggest that they first appeared on Earth about 220 million years ago, at the same time as the dinosaurs. They have been a symbol of longevity, strength and endurance. Now they are endangered. Will we let them disappear? Are we here to share or to take over? People think that if we want to protect the beaches, that, that we will stop them from building uh, or 
stop them from putting umbrellas and sandals on the beach, which is not our, our target. It's on the contrary, is to, to figure out a way how to live together, how to share the beaches with the turtles and the humans together. Uh, so it's true that we, we recommend hotels to build a little bit behind the beach, not to destroy the whole beach. And we also recommend people to remove the sunbeds and the umbrellas at night time. So in the morning when the tourists come back on the beach, they can put their umbrellas back. But at night time, it should be left quiet. And I think the example of Zakynthos, where we created a marine park, shows that we were able to, to save the beach of Zakynthos. And if you go to Crete, you will see that the, the opposite, where the beach has completely disappeared. And the turtles will disappear, but I think also the tourism will, will go somewhere else. Ahalon believes that we can all live together and that it is up to us to show our care and respect for other species. I've been working with Ahelon since 2010. I have a, an idea that we should preserve like, the eco-diversity of the world and I, want to, and I enjoy the fact that maybe I can make a tiny, tiny, tiny difference yeah. in this perspective. And we draw it like a little circle, it's not filled out, and then to mark the nest. When I read about the project, I basically knew that it would be something that I really liked and so far, yeah, I really liked it. They do lots of barbecues and, and for birthdays and uh, it's generally a really nice environment to be around and you know that you're, that you're helping, you're making a difference to an animal that was here uh, at, this, at the age of the dinosaurs, so we want to keep them, keep them going in, in the Greek waters.